Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tech Made Simple. My name is Colin Black and today I'm super excited to be bringing you another product review of one of the best, if not the best, RFID handheld scanners out there in the market today. I've had the opportunity of working with many different handheld RFID scanners. This video that I'm making today is probably gonna be my favorite just because as an RFID engineer, you are doing product testing day in and day out, lots of different opportunities. You're benchmarking different readers, you're testing different inlays, a variety of different things. So you want to have an RFID handheld reader that's reliable, performs very well, and is easy to work with. And the product that I'm covering today does all of that and then some, and I'm just very excited to talk about some of the features of this reader. So with that, and without any further delay, let's cover it. Today's reader is the CSL CS108 handheld RFID reader. Yes, this is the CS108 reader from CSL, Convergence Systems Limited. I know they actually have a newer reader out that's just launched using one of Impinge's newest reader chips. If I get one of those readers in, I will also do a review of that if you guys are interested. If so, make sure you leave some comments below. But I also wanted to take this time to showcase a product that I think is absolutely awesome, and that is... Boom, the CS101. As you can see, this was the this CSL reader before this new edition, the CS108. And as you can see, I mean, look at those soft keys. I mean, this thing was an absolute beast. I mean, you can see the difference in how more compact readers have evolved to. But again, this was one of the original readers from CSL. It had the built-in interface with screen. So obviously this is before the Bluetooth connections with the readers, but you can just see a lot of where this came from. I mean, there was a lot built into this reader. Again, the soft keys built in here, very, very cool. But again, given where the technology is going with the Bluetooth capabilities, we're certainly adopting and increasing our technologies. But I thought it was cool to kind of show this, this relic here because this has definitely been used in our facility many, many times. Instant reaction to the reader is that it's extremely compact. It's very ergonomic and well-made in terms of it really feels comfortable in your hand to where if you have to use it for a long period of time, you definitely can tell that it's gonna be a comfortable fit and a comfortable use. The static reader comes in this CSL, kind of a lighter blue color, which I personally like. I'm a blue guy, but if you're against blue or for, for whatever reason you're against this color scheme or color palette, CSL, the, I guess the first feature I'll cover today is the CSL, they actually provide custom branding for these handheld devices, especially if you're a reseller looking to resell this unit and you say, let's say your colors are red, say the opposite of what the stock color of this is, you can actually have this custom made in your company's brand for all the different colored components around this. So the buttons, a lot of those different things can be tailored towards your company's brand and colors. I believe that you can also put a logo on the front of this. So if you don't want the CSL, you can actually have your company's logo placed on the front of this rear, which is actually really cool. Again, especially for the resellers in the world. Okay, before we dive into some of the internal components or some of the main features of this reader, I kind of want to just look around, talk about the outside and some of the main benefits of this particular device, as well as some of the attachments and features that can come with this reader as well. First and foremost, this is a Bluetooth sled reader, meaning there is no onboard computer interactive interface. You do have to pair this device with a smart device of some sort, whether it be a phone, a tablet, or another computer device. And what I can say about that is that's certainly the direction that most every handheld manufacturer is moving to nowadays, because if you have an internal operating system with some sort of interface built into the device, that is going to require the operator to update the device itself which means they're gonna to have to push out firmware updates. You're gonna to have to connect the device to a computer to where you have to update that specific device. 
or if it has internet connection, you still have to go out there and find ways to update the device itself. Whereas pushing different updates through applications is much easier for a lot of these manufacturers to keep these devices up to date. I'm already skipping ahead into some of the internal components, but I did want to touch on and say that this device doesn't have that. It is a Bluetooth pairing device. So that leads me into one of the main first features of this reader and that is the mounting brackets on top of the device. I think are very well designed. The actual mounting contact points are a thick, durable rubber, so you're definitely not gonna scratch any device that you put on this. And as you can see, both of these devices are spring-loaded, so they can stretch and they open based on the internal spring components, which is very nice. It makes it easy to mount, again, a mobile device or some sort of Bluetooth pairing device. Another benefit, though, that I wanted to touch on is that CSL actually offers two additional mounting configurations for this exact reader and they can be easily swapped out for the stock mounting bracket on here and the other two options are they offer a taller mounting bracket so if you have a thicker device that you need to mount to this and the stock mounting bracket doesn't fit they offer one that's raised i don't know exactly how far it's raised off but it gets it to i i believe close to an inch i mean it's pretty pretty tall so if you are looking to mount a thicker device or the second device is it's actually an extended mounting bracket where it goes wider so if you're going to mount like a tablet or so something that has a bigger screen it could be beneficial especially if you're looking to record and track a lot of data a, a bigger device may be beneficial so there is another bracket for that and really cool how you can remove this it's it's very simple these two little silver latches they just open up like this and then the device just slides off nice and easy. So while I have this off, you can see that this is just the battery cover as well. So it's a mount, but it's also covering the battery as well. So if you need to swap out the battery pack, it's right there. You can easily, you pull this blue little latch there and then the battery pops right up and open. And that's how you get access to the battery. Very cool, it's very swappable, it's easy to do. I think that kind of adds as a feature um, gives you a little more variability in how you're going to use the device. I will also add that these brackets can also be removed. There's some screws right here on the side that you can use, easily use a flathead screwdriver to remove this, the mounting brackets overall. So looking at some of the, again, the electrical specs, you can charge this device with a USB Type-C, which is very good. Many of the Android devices nowadays are switching to a USB Type-C versus the old micro USB. It's very cool. Also, there's some light indicators on the side indicating that you are either using the RF mode, the barcode scanning mode, as well as the current status, whether it's connected and paired to a device or not. Also lets you know whether they're using the battery or an external power for the reader. So the other feature of this reader is it is both an RFID scanner as well as a barcode scanner. So it can scan both linear and 2D barcodes with the use of this scanner on the front of the reader. So what's cool about this as well, this is also an attachment. The barcode scanning device, it can be swapped in and out. It's very um, easy to do. These two blue buttons on the side, you press both of those in and it actually pops out this lens, which is the barcode scanning module. So this can easily be swapped out for another scanner, another type, but um, again, it just shows kind of the variability of this scanner, which there's a lot of engineering that went into this, as you can see, and I think it's really cool. The ease of use, the swappability, I think is another added feature. All right, so I think that's enough covering kind of the basics of the exterior of the device. Now I want to go and start highlighting some of the main performance characteristics of the CSL and ultimately share some of the reasons why I prefer this device compared to some of the others in the market. So typically when you're looking at RFID handhelds, one of the main questions that people ask is, well, what is the read range capability of the handheld device? If you've been watching my channel long enough, you probably know that a handheld reader is limited in some aspects when you're comparing that to a fixed reader and fixed antenna. And that primarily has to do with the antenna that is on board these handheld devices. It's typically smaller, has a little less gain, and ultimately cannot match the performance of some of the larger antennas with your fixed reader setups. This CSL unit has what I believe is the industry benchmark with handheld readers, 
reading RFID tags up to 20 meters away. Obviously that depends on what RFID tag and the environment and application it's in, but having that type of read distance on a handheld device that's this compact is actually very, very good. So no complaints there, especially when in terms of read range. While we're talking about read range, I know one of my videos that I talked about the polarization and how antenna polarization significantly affects the read distance that you can read, especially with your handheld devices. I'll link up above my video which explains the difference between linear and circular polarization and how the two kind of compare in terms of how far away you're able to read tags. But this is probably my favorite feature of this CS108 reader and that is it has the ability to change between linear polarization and circular polarization. Yes, you heard that, it can switch between linear and circular polarization, depending on the application. To me, that makes this probably the most versatile reader on the market because for many RFID users out there, you aren't always going to be able to control the orientation of the tags. So you have to go with circular polarization because otherwise you may miss the reads overall. But there may be times when you can control that orientation and you really do wanna max out that performance. So having the ability to switch this over to linear polarization to boost your read range to get up to 20 meters away, I think that is pretty awesome and is valuable in itself by being able to do that with the click of a button. So one thing to note as well with this, so it doesn't just have the ability to change from circular to linear polarization, but there are two types of linear polarization that this reader is capable of doing. It can do both horizontal linear polarization as well as vertical linear polarization. So again, more versatility depending on which way your tags are oriented, you can maximize the read distance by swapping between those two linear polarization modes. Another question most people ask when it comes to the durability of handheld readers, because inevitably, if you're using these for inventory tracking or some sort of warehouse tracking, a reader is going to get dropped. So probably an underrated question is, what is the durability of the device? Well, obviously you can't feel the device that I have here, but these blue pieces that you can see that are laid out among the reader actually do feel like they are a rubber, uh, type material that actually matches this grip as you can see and that actually adds to you can kind of hear the sound It's it's it is rubber. It's not plastic which kind of adds maybe to some of the shock resistance But I can say I think the spec sheet for this particular reader calls out like a drop test like over like a meter or something like you know, maybe four feet or something along those lines, which is pretty good So if you're standing and you drop it, you know, you're three four feet off the ground. It's a apparently been tested to kind of withstand something like that. So, I mean, that's that's good in terms of the durability. Um, but as far as some of the other ratings, I think I, I saw that this was an IP54 rating as well. So just something to keep in mind. So lastly, I'll do a quick example of pairing my phone to the device because it's extremely quick. It picks up your device right away. So I'll go ahead, open up my phone here, quickly mount it into the thing, already mounted, good to go and I will go over to the CSL app right away first powering on the device you just hold the button and release it's been turned on and it instantly goes into Bluetooth pairing mode you can see the Bluetooth pairing mode is flashing meaning it's ready to pair with the device I can go into the app which I'm already in and at the very bottom there is press to connect to the reader. So I'll go ahead and press that. Instantly, it pops up, it shows it's ready to pair. I can go ahead and click it. Actually, I'll even talk another feature. It actually even shows the distance away, the, the signal strength, the RSSI of the device to the reader, showing you how strong the connection is from the phone to the reader. So that is actually very, very cool. So I'll go ahead and click OK to get to connect to the reader. It's initializing and boom, it's already connected to the reader. So very, very fast, very cool. And of course, right away, it says my firmware is old, so I need to update that via my app right here. Probably because my app's pretty old, but anyway, 
This reader also has a variety of functions that are pretty standard across most handheld readers, such as your inventory mode, your read-write mode, the ability to read and write RFID tags, as well as your Geiger function. If you're searching for tags, you can find tags with this. It also has some security functions as well that I won't cover in this video, but if you're interested, I can certainly do another video covering some of those features. One of the things I did want to cover with this specific reader, however, is it does have the ability to read and capture temperature sensor data, which isn't common. And most readers on the market don't have that ability to access that portion of an RFID tag, but this particular reader does, which adds for another value feature of this reader. But with that, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you leave some comments below on what other RFID concepts you want made simple.